Hi everyone, I'm Paul Dix, the founder and CTO of Influx Data, the company behind InfluxDB, an open source time series database. Today, I wanted to talk quickly about time series data and what we mean when we talk about time series data and why we think it's a different use case within the data space. So really, when we talk about time series data, we're talking about metrics and events. I'll draw something on the board here to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. So imagine that we have time here on this horizontal line going this way. And on this timeline, we have specific things happening. Now these things are at fixed intervals happening evenly in time. So these would be metrics. They're collected at regular intervals, summarizing some data. In this case, let's say it's once every 10 seconds. Each of these lines is 10 seconds apart on the timeline. As I mentioned, that's metrics. The other kind are just raw events. So here, we'll draw another timeline. And then we'll just draw some events on this timeline. A few here, one here, three here, one over here. So these are just raw events happening on a timeline. Now, the interesting thing about an irregular timeline and a regular timeline is that you can induce a regular timeline from an irregular one. So say, for example, that we wanted to count how many events happened in each 10 second window. We could do that here. So here we have two, we have one, we have three, we have zero, and we have one here. So what we've done here is we've actually induced a regular time series where we have once every 10 seconds from this irregular one. Now, what makes time series different than dealing with other kinds of data? The big thing is you're capturing history. So you have data that's an append-only workload of things coming in all the time. The other big thing is that you frequently want to do historical backfill. So these are bulk uploads of large sets of data. And the other thing is when you want to do deletes, you're frequently deleting large ranges of data of old time. This is something that normal databases find difficult to deal with. And then lastly, you want to manage your data lifecycle. Because you're ingesting so much data over this time, it gets expensive to store it all. So you'd like to summarize that data and evict the high precision data to save space. In an ideal system, you would have all of this stuff automated for you. Now, I came up with the idea for InfluxDB after working at a fintech startup in 2010, where I had to create a time series solution using just web services and Cassandra and Redis. I realized then how much application level code I had to write to handle all of these problems. So we created InfluxDB and we rolled all of these things into the database to make it easier to use to build time series applications on top of. So, have a look, give it a try. Thank you.